This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is an online mentoring program that teaches people with no experience how to create a real profitable online business and e-commerce. I have been working with Ryan at Change for a few years now and attended many events and got to meet the amazing community of like-minded people. These guys are the best of the best. The support these guys offer is personal, no bots or employees, there's no experience needed, but like anything in life, it takes time as it's a real business with real results. For more information, go check out Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help build a successful business. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. The roulette machines, they come out into the bookmakers 15, 16 years ago. And when they come out, that's when I have lost over four million pounds in them disgusting fucking roulette machines. And I paid this out, 900 quid, and I said, Dad, this is fucking murder. And that went on, um, (laughs) fucking hell, for 25 years. When we got that slip back, what we was just doing was just having a five pound forecast double. And we could just, we could just make it to whatever we wanted to. So like, if it was in a independent, and it said the, the, the maximum you can win in one day is 10,000 per slip. What we used to do is purposely make it to like 11 or 12 grand, the, the winning slip. I had 100 grand on an horse at four to one um, last year and it won. Yeah, so, well, yeah, you can do the maths. There was like three CRD plain clothes all pretending to like be reading the form in the shop. And they said, uh, Jason, Brian, you're, uh, you're under arrest. And um, yeah, straight to uh, straight to prison. Just they nice, um that's what I'm saying. Fuck, because I'll tell you what, it's perfected. Boom, we're on. <coughs> Today's guest, we've got Jason. Jace, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, John. Yeah, not too bad at all. So, a man who scammed the bookies. You've been in and out of prison quite yeah. a few times. Yes. You're yeah. still gambling. You've done a lot of mad stuff. You still do your your tips and your naps and you're still gambling. I was a gambling addict, so this will be a very interesting conversation. Okay. First and foremost, how are you? Um. Yeah, yeah, I'm great. Yeah, absolutely fantastic, to be honest. Behaving? Behaving myself, yeah. Um, last time I was in prison was um, <clears throat> two years ago. I was in there for 10 weeks and uh, she's got to stop. So that's what I'm saying. I've come over all fucking. Uh, just, just let me just. Yeah, take the time. Do you know what I mean? Because I can hear it in my fucking. No, listen, it. don't worry about <clears throat> that, man. Like, get your water. Yeah, no, nah, just like, um, that's what I'm saying. Fuck, because I'll tell you what, it's perfect. Before we get into all the mad stuff, I always like to go back to the start of my guests, get a bit more information about you, where you grew up, and how it all began. Right, um, fucking hell, where do we start? Um, so, my old man got me into gambling. Um, when I was nine, he was taking me into poker, uh, poker dens. I was sitting there just watching him play poker for fucking hours. Um, he got me to play a game of pool with... Um, one of his mates for 500 quid when I was nine. Uh, I won the game and we got in about four o'clock in the morning that that uh, that particular night. And um, he didn't give me a drink. I thought he was going to give me like a tenner or a father. And he said, look, he said, well done for for that. Um, you can have the day off school the next day. Um, and then it just went on from there, really. I mean, it was just me and dad continuously. It was always me and dad. Hustling? 
Basically, yeah, James, yeah. Yeah, just like literally, it's, it's crazy. It's like um, when I was at school and, 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 and I got myself in a, like a funny situation, I used to think to myself, what would dad think? What would dad do? You know, always in my fucking head. It's always dad this, dad that, dad this. But um, how are you so good at pool at a young age? <laughs> how did you know? <laughs> if you're beating people at nine years old. Um, I don't know. I think you've either got it or, or you haven't at pool. You know, I think like, you know, like the one of those uh Stephen Hendry, Steve Davis, you know, you've either got it or you haven't. And, and basically that's it, you know, and I think um, I had it and uh, yeah, I've still got it. Yeah. As when I go back to my gambling, when I first gambled, I was gambling for like four years old. Mm. We used to go to Largs with the family in Scotland and there was little, little machines you put 10 pence in yeah. and the horses were there. That's right. I yeah, remember yeah, that. And yeah. I, always, I used to cry when they tried to take me away. Yeah, I was yeah. buzzing. My dad used to take me to Shawfield for a young age, not knowing the effects with it has. I used to play a thing called Chippy at school. That's right. I yeah. just fucking loved it, man. I just, yeah, but then I would steal money at a young age to yes, gamble. Yeah. But, so after nine and that, what were you doing at school? Were you in school much or were you on the road with your yeah, dad? Um I used to um I used to go to school beat two, three times a week. Um the other the other two, three, I was at the snooker clubs, uh hustling uh, men, uh ten pound a game, twenty pound a game and all that. My mum and dad, they split up um for for the for seventeen years, twelve fucking 12 months of the year so like 12 12 times a year they'd split up and when he wasn't there um i would be at the fucking snooker clubs playing for dough and bring the dough home for mum and then a month later i'll come back from school and i'd be on the set he cuddled up and all that having a bottle of fucking wine and then a month later he'd be off again um and that's down to gambling you know i mean uh he was out just fucking continuously gambling, continuously, continuously. Uh, couldn't pay the rent, couldn't pay the fucking mortgage. And um, that just went on. And and I ended up taking dad's side. When, when I had a ruck, I wanted to be with me dad, you know? Why? I just, I, he had this fucking, he had this hold over me, James. Um, it's quite hard to explain, but he just had this fucking knack with me. Um, I think that's trauma bonding. Oh, uh, yeah, it's really weird. It's really, really, really weird. To, and he's still fucking got it now. Still alive? He's 84. And, um, yeah, he, he uh, messaged me and, uh, what are you up to? Should we go out? And I'm thinking, should we go out? Like, Dad, you're 80 fucking four now. Time to fucking slow down and, you know, give it a break and all that. But, um... Yeah, he was the, uh, so where I got my gambling from was my old man. Yes, yeah. yeah. It can be a generational thing. All my uncles and granddads and that gambled. Did you ever see the destruction it was causing though at a young age? Or did no, you not see it because no, you loved them so no, much? No, not at all. No, no, it was, um, no, all I wanted to do was just be with him and gamble. That, that's all I wanted to do. Do you think it just brings back a lot of emotions though, talking about your dad? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, as I say, he had, he had this fucking hold over me, but um, I worshipped the fucking ground that he walked. You know, every everything he'd done, I wanted to copy him. I wanted to be like him. Um, I just wanted to think like him. I mean, you know, fuck me. When he wasn't with mum, he always had a fucking, he had another bird. Always had a dog track, always fucking winning fucking dough, uh, Always thousands, thousands, and then, and then the next week, fucking done it, done a lot. But he'd always seem to get out of trouble. Always seemed to get bang out of trouble. <clears throat> Couple of months on, maybe he got his house with mum, fucking brand new motor. Month later, he's done a lot again. But he always seemed to. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know how he done it, but um, yeah, he just seemed to, and I just, I just wanted to be like him. I just, just wanted my dad's life. Yeah. Do you think you have your dad's life? Not now. No. Um, I mean, he, he introduced me to casinos and uh, the the roulette. Fucking the roulette really fucking got hold of me. Really, really fucking got hold of me. What age? Uh, Sixteen. He took me into a casino. Um, 
you could just so, you could just sign someone in then. Like nowadays, you know, ID and all that going, but you could just sign someone as a guest. And uh, I think I won. I, I think I won about fifteen hundred quid the first time I was in uh, in a casino playing roulette. And so that's sixteen. I stopped six years ago. So like 16, 20, 25, 30 years of continuously doing my fucking dough playing roulette, yeah. It's a long time, isn't it? What did you do after school, Jess? After school? Did you get um, a job or anything or was it just constantly hustling? Yes, yeah, no, because the old man, he he, he actually was a builder. So... He had a little roofing firm and bricklaying and plastering and whatever. And um, me and Ian, my brother, we was working f- like full dead. We wasn't actually doing the roofs. I mean, we was just like up and down the ladder, uh, tiles on the fucking shoulder, you know, here, past the fucking tiles and all that kind. But um, that was like 16, yeah, for about four years. I'd, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I'd done some work, yeah. When did you realise that you were sucked into gambling? Did you know from a young age or that were you just oblivious for it? Um, same as yourself. Um, I used to go at the pier in South Sea and uh, play them machines, what you was on about. I used to play the fruit machines and, um, <clears throat> yeah, proper fucking, uh, <laughs> about nine. Yeah, about nine years of age, yeah. yeah. It's fucking a long time, man. Yeah. I was the same, it just... I just didn't realise the extent of how it was. Like, we used to get our wages on a Thursday at Albion Rovers mm. football. I went straight to the bookies, yeah. and every time I'd done my tank, then I had to fucking skip the train. Yeah. I don't know how many conductors I was arguing with or yeah. fighting with, <laughs> jumping in the train, trying to run round and go yeah. f- run the back one yeah. to get home, and then I had to walk home. Yeah. My mum and dad's like, oh, where's your wages? It was only <clears throat> fucking 80 quid or 70 <clears throat> quid. But I just want to say something. I'm not crying. My, my eyes actually fucking watering, so I'm not crying. Yeah. Oi. <laughs> just get that bit in. <clears throat> but yeah, um, so then I think I was 20 and my old man was, um, he'd just been charged with uh, about 20 grand's worth of fraud. It'd been a call and he got bail and we was living at, uh, at my uncle's house um, and he come home from, from the court and said, look, Jace, I'm going on the run. He said, I am not going back to prison. So I said, all right. And he, 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 he didn't, he begged me to, to go with him. He didn't ask me. And uh, I said, yeah. I said, fuck it, yeah. What are we going to do? He said, well, we're going to start a roofing business down Cornwall. I said, right, yeah, great. Yeah, fuck it. Um, I didn't have a bird at the time. And uh, my life was like pretty shit going nowhere and all that. So I said, yeah. So... We got hold of a motor and um, we got as far as Devon. And he said, I'll tell you what, <clears throat> we'll, um, we'll try and fuck the bookie, shall we? I said, how are we going to do that? He said, well, we'll just put some bets on after the um, Greyhound race is finished. And hopefully that they, they, they don't realise that we'd put the bet on after the race had finished and they pay us out. So I think on the fifth or sixth shop, we got paid eight two hundred and twenty quid, and so like that sort of kept us going for a bit. And then we just sort of like driving around aimlessly. I was doing it, then he was doing it, and then like the managers were saying, "I oh, know you put that on after the race had finished. Like, here's your six quid back or whatever we put on a stake in it." And then we've gone in one. I think it was in Weymouth, and um, he said, "Right, you do it, son." I said, "No, Dad, you fucking do it." I said, "I've done the last three. So I went in the toilet in his bookmakers and um, I've come out. I said, all right, you get on. He said, yeah. I said, what'd you do? So he showed me the bet. I said, dad, you didn't put the fucking uh, dogs in, like like three to beat five or four to beat six or whatever. He's gone, oh, for fuck's sake. So he's gone up the burby on a jump. He said, love, I haven't put my um, dogs in. So she gave him the top copy of the betting slip back and said, yeah, I'll put them in then. So we thought, what the fuck? Like the race had finished. And it was like, I think, just say it was like one, 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 one and two come second. Um, he's put one to beat two, six pound forecast. Anyway, the, the, the manager come back and um, he's given a bet 
And she said, oh, you're too late for this. Uh, you, you can't get paid. Here's your six quid back. So we come out of the shop and he said, fuck me, did you just see what happened then, Jace? I said, yes. He said, how the fuck can we do this? Get the fucking top copy back and con him. I said, I don't know. And we just, we, we, we was in the car for like a couple of hours thinking about it, thinking, 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 how the fuck can we do it? And um, we come up with this idea that if we leave, if, if, if we write a horse on the top copy and put £10 forecast, for example, but make it a double barreled name, it looks like, just say, for example, um, Betty's Hot Pot is the horse. <laughs> With a woman and put a dash between Betty's and Hot Pot. So the woman would think that it's Betty to beat Hot Pot. £10 forecast. So we'd give her the bet before the race. So then they put it through the till. And in them days, it was the old tills. Um, there was a little time thing on it, a little stamp thing on it and all that. So she'd go to tear the, the, the bet and slip in half to give us the pink bit or the yellow bit which was our seat. And just before she'd like, like tear it in half, we'd say, oh, darling, I've only put one horse in for me forecast. So she'd look at it and say, no, you, you've got Betty, like there, Betty to win and Hot Pot becomes second. And we'd say, no, Betty, Betty fucking Hot Pot is one horse. And so she'd go, oh, you silly nan. And she'd put the betting slip on the counter for us to put another horse in. But what we'd done, we'd wrote another um, uh, betting slip out uh, identical to the one what we just fucking give her. And then basically all we had to do was just get that one back and swap it for the other one what we'd wrote identical. So we used to say, oh, could you put the um, one o'clock at Newmarket on the screen for us, darling? So she, like, she'd turn her head and she'd look up. And as she looked up, we'd like slate of hand swap the betting slip. And then she'd say, yeah, look, it's your one o'clock at Newmarket. And then we'd we just say, oh, do you know what, darling? Just, just, just change it to a win. So we're like, Betty's hot pot to win, £10 win. She's all right, okay. And now we've got this fucking betting slip with a time on it, that date, um, and a, a betting slip number, which was like, basically what we used to call it was a fucking uh, golden ticket really, because like we could, you could just do whatever you want with that betting slip. You can just, like, we bought this fucking pen as well from W.H. Smith. The pen was like £1.10, um, a razor max, it was called. And we used to just rub out the fucking ink on the betting slip. So now we've got a blank betting slip, and you can just literally just do what you want. So we used to watch a race or two. At the beginning, when we first, when we first done it, we'd done a £10 forecast. And now we've got to get the white uh, top copy over to, and uh, at the beginning, we didn't have a fucking clue what we was doing. So we used to just chuck the fucking uh, top copy over. And sometimes it used to spin like a fucking helicopter. And sometimes it just like land on the floor. And they'd pick it up and they'd put it on with all the other white slips. And then it used to go to the back of the shop where the set there was. And then they'd mark it. And as I say, the first one we'd done, it was all nervous now. We thought, oh, well, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And um, the settler at the back of the shop, she's put, like, pay out 220 quid, sent it to the cashier. We'd give the cashier the receipt, and they paid us eight 220 quid, and, uh, or 240 or whatever it was. And I said, Dad, fuck me. We can, we can go around the country doing this. So we'd done it another, like, five or six times, 200 here, 240, 260. And then I said, Dad, should we try a tri-cast? And he said, no, Jace, you're strong in it. And I said, no, fuck it, let's try it. So. Is that when the Greek kicks in? Yeah, because, like, you know, try cast, you know, I mean, they can pay like. like Grands. Yeah, well, it's like between like 60 quid and 200 quid. So Why are you not going big and, and smashing it? <laughs> we did. <laughs> oh, <they> just, <laughs> instead of the 240s, now, why are you not doing like 100 quid, 200 quid? <laughs> no, because. No, yeah, no, all you need is little steak. Um, if you have it, like, because. Like, exactly, the, fly under the radar. Well, I think like if you, if you're going in there like you know 100 quid, 200 quid, they sort of like whoa, what's going on here? And they read your bet, you know. Oh, uh, Mary, this chap's having 200 quid here, you know. Then they might start getting on the phone and all that. Um, so what we used to do, we used to keep it to a minimum, 
ten pound. I used to see ten pound on the slip, and I didn't even like read it. I just put it through. But as I say, then we started on trial cars, and like I it was in a a, a lab book, so I think I'm allowed to say that. And I said, Dad, should we do a trial cast? He said, No, fuck it. He said that'd be strong in it. I thought, fuck it, I'm gonna do it without, <laughs> without even fucking telling. Him. <laughs> so I've done a ten pound trial cast. The result was like three two six or something. So I put three two six on the golden ticket. We've got the white slip over to the woman, and um, it's paid ninety pound. Now ninety pound times ten is nine hundred quid, and. Uh, the settler at the back, I've, I've gone out to collect it, and the settler at the back said, oh, my fucking God, like, how did you do that? I said, they're my lucky numbers, darling. Oh, I always do them. I always do them numbers. And I paid this out, 900 quid, and I said, Dad, this is fucking murder. And that went on, um, <laughs> fucking hell, for 25 years. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, 25 years, yeah. Yeah, what, 20, yeah. <laughs> what year? Saving the money though as a gambler, or were you just putting bigger bets on them when you went to the casino and stuff? No, well, so we draw a lump. I mean, we, it, it was like 1800s, 19 Labrooks, Willie Mills, and Coles in them days, over two grand. They had to check it with another shop, or they, they used to say, Look, we're gonna check the camera because there was a camera in the till, we check the film. Uh, because it's over two grand, so you'd have to come back tomorrow. So we always used to keep it below two grand, so we could just get the 1800 or 1900 that day. Um, after six months, I mean, we used to go, and it was mainly fucking independent bookmakers in them days. Oh, excuse me. You don't see independence now, but we used to, it was like 10,000 10, a shop in independence. It was fucking crazy. And, and they'd pay us ready. They, they, they'd go to the bank. They give us a fucking check, a kite. All they pay is fucking ready. As I'm saying, it went up to 10 grand. But but what we was doing, when we was collecting the 18 or 19 from Labrooks, all the 10 grand for the independence, we'd fuck off to an hotel, um, get drunk, have a nice fucking steak and all that. Then we'd go eat uh, to a boozer, shant, more drink, more drink, more drink. Um, then a nightclub. Me and fucking dad in a nightclub. I was 20. He was, what, 52, 53. Mind you, he always had the fucking birds around him in the nightclub. It was weird. I used to pull one every now and again. But he, had, he was always fucking surrounded by fucking birds. Anyway, and then um, one o'clock in the morning, casino, and we'd just do the fucking lot. we just, we just literally, every now and again, you'd win... We would be there till like the, the last spin, sort of four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. And if we happened to be in front on the last spin, then, you know, we'd had a fucking, we'd had a good night. But like 19 out of 20 times, we would do all of our fucking money on the roulette. Also, the old man, he, he just, he, he loved every fucking horse race, every fucking dog race. So sometimes we was to collect two, three grand, say like in an independent, and I say, right, come on, Dad, let's fuck off. And he'd say, no, let's, we might as well just stay here and have a bet. And me and I said, what do you mean to stay and have a bet? We've just done them for three grand. We've got to fuck off. Yeah, but look, look who's on that. Look, McCoy's on that. Let's have 400 quid on that. For fuck's sake, Dad, McCoy ain't going to fucking win this, Dad. Yeah, but no, no, Jace, no, no. He's, look, look, he won the last two races, all this fucking nonsense. Then we'd stay in the shop. It was so fucking, when I think about it now, it was so fucking pathetic. We'd stay in the shop and give them the fucking three grand back, what we just conned out of them. It was insane. Sometimes you used to have a double con in the shop. <laughs> sometimes we had like five or six in one shop. But um, sometimes we'd, we'd, we'd con them for three grand. Then dad would like say, come on, let's have a bet. We'd do the three grand back. And then we'd con them again for like 2,800, 2,900. And then we'd fuck off. And then the usual hotel, drink, food, uh, nightclub, casino wake up in the morning with 60 quid and then back on the road again uh back into back into the bookies again so so basically just conning to feed your habit yeah basically james yeah that's all it was yeah just literally conning getting a dough uh roulette roulette fucking that roulette i'll tell you it's crazy that you could have oh. you could have been a multi-millionaire well taking three grand six grands 
and then just putting it back on. You're just basically feeding a habit. You're, you're better <laughs> off just putting on fucking no bets. Obviously, well, it's easier says and done me saying that, it, but, yeah. but it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. The best you never even done the fucking con. Um, but obviously, yeah. you're living that high lifestyle, yeah. which is the turn on, the attraction, being with your dad, just so much yeah. as a massive yeah. attraction. Like, so you were getting the slips, swapping the slips. So when you rip the slip, were you throwing it on the floor so they could put it in with the stack? Yeah, that was like in the beginning. We used to throw it on the floor or throw it or, or like, oh, babes, could you get us a cup of tea or can you get us a tango or a Coke or something? And then as soon as they turn around, we'd, we'd chuck it. Sometimes it used to land on the floor. Uh, sometimes it'll land on their counter and then they just fucking pick it up and put it with the rest of the poles. But that got a bit stupid because I think a couple of times they see us chucking it over. And they said, what, did, what, what have you just fucking done? And we said, nothing, nothing. And then they just like, they picked it up from the counter or the floor. And I said, have you just chucked that over? Oh, and then, oh, 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 it's a winning bet. It comes to like two and a half grand. Uh, can you leave the shop, please? And all that game. So I said, Dad, we've got to stop chucking it over. So what we done, it just, it was a little bit of, um, it weren't genius, but it was just better to get the weight slip over. Um, we give them three genuine bets. They put them through the till. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Tear them, tear them in half, all three. Give us the pink copies. And then we used to just slide the fucking white copy underneath the pink, the three copies and say, oh, darling, you've just given us that back by mistake. And she'd go, oh, my God, oh, my God, what have I done? And, and, and she'd pick the white slip and say, oh, thank you so much. She didn't realise it is a fucking, like a con fucking slip. And then she'd put that white slip herself with all the other white slips, and then all the other white slips would go to the back of the shop where the uh, settler was. So it wasn't no... Um... So see if you were putting on the tenor. Yeah. See when you got their slip back. Yeah. You could have wrote anything on it. Anything you fucking How want. How much were you writing on it? Because their till must have been short then every every day's <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah, nah, they, nah, they till, yeah, their tills are short like fucking 10 grand sometimes, you know what I mean? Yeah, but if you're writing a slip, say 100 quid this time, they've not even got the 100 quid either. No, 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 no. It used to be, it used to be a tenner. Sometimes it could just be a father, James, because in the end, what we, what we was doing, when we got that slip back, what we was just doing was just having a five pound forecast double. And we could just, we could just make it to whatever we wanted to. So like if it was in an independent and uh, it said like the, the maximum you can win in one day is 10,000 per slip. What we used to do is purposely make it to like 11 or 12 grand, the, the winning slip. And um, we go out to the jump and he'd say, uh, look, there's a fucking slip. There's a, a poster out there. It says you, you can only win 10 grand. And then we used to go, oh, fuck. So like, if we'd have put that on in lab books, we'd have got 12 grand. And they said, well, the rules are the rules, you know, you, 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 it's only fucking 10 grand. I mean, we're absolutely buzzing inside, you know, it was like, like doing them for 10 grand but um yeah it, it, father no it's not, you, you didn't have to put 100 quid on or 200 quid or anything like that no it was literally like four or five pound yeah was there anybody else onto this um <laughs> what do you mean like what what other people yeah hmm. because it just seems so easy <laughs> i don't there used to be a bookies in in glasgow i'm not mentioning one but the time is 48 seconds behind yeah yeah we used to go in shops and i was like four or five minutes behind in that you know you could just do what you fucking want then you could just put like anything you you know have a 15 20 pound forecast if you didn't want to fucking be asking for slips back and all that their time was out um i don't know i don't know if you know but they, they used to put a slip through called an off slip at the beginning of the race so like when the bow uh, rang on the on the grounds used to put a slip through so if your if your number on your slip was after that slip then uh, you you put the bet on after the off slip, so you you're not going to get paid. But in them days, half of them they were so fucking dizzy they just forgot to put the off slip through, and that was it. We just fucking uh, that's just one, James. There was so fucking there was so many. It was it, it just it just got it just got out of hand. To be honest, it just got it just got stupid. It just got absolutely fucking crazy. What was the most you won in one day? I had hundred grand on an horse at four to one um, last year, and it won. Yeah, so well, yeah, you can do the maths. Forty to one, four. Oh, oh, she was fucking forty yeah. to one, four to one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but that's fuck all. If, if you're picking up tens and that, you, what was the biggest bet you put on? That, that a grand? No, no, James, a hundred, 
100 grand. Oh, 100 yeah. grand. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking, a yeah. grand at 41. No, 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 100, yeah. Yeah, with a, a bookmaker who, um, there's only one bookmaker now in the country what will take a bet from me. One. I can't have a bet in the fucking bookies. <laughs> no, no, no. No fucking just, wonder, though. Yeah. You skanked them at fucking millions. Yeah but, we've, <laughs> yeah, but it's all stopped. It's all stopped, James. You know what I mean? And there was a Crown Court judge what banned us from 2014 to 2019. It's now what we're in 2023. And um, it's, yeah, the band's up. The band finished four years ago. You know, I should be allowed to go in and, and put a bet on. But now I'll go in and they say, Jace, they're good as gold. Um, they're nice and polite. You know, they say, Jace, can, can you leave? And I says, yeah, yeah. One, I was dying for a uh, I don't want to use a toilet one day. And I thought, I'm not, I, I didn't go in there to have a bet. I just want to use a toilet. I've gone in there. I said, I'm just going to use a toilet. He said, no, fuck off. And I, I, said, I said, I'm dying for a piss. And uh, he said, no, get out. So I just, yeah, I just left. Yeah. When did it come on top for you? It come on top um, about three years like into it. And we got nicked. No, yeah. Did we get nicked in, in March? A little, a little town in, near Norfolk called March. M-I-R-C-H. It was Labrooks. Um, and we've gone in, I think it was come, 17, 1,800 1800 quid. And they was good as gold, two women, very, very lovely, genuine, nice women. And um, they said, look, we ain't got the money. Could you just drive 45 minutes to the next town? I can't remember the name of the, the, the next town they said, but they've got the money for you. And we drove 45 minutes to the next town and we've gone in there. There's a couple of geezers in there. And they said, oh, no, we ain't got the money. And we said, well, the, the woman in March just said, drive to this town to, to, to collect the money. And they went, oh, we've just had a big payout. And we thought, oh, this don't sound right. So um, he said, look, go back to March tomorrow in the morning and they'll have the money for you. And I said to Dad, I said, Dad, I don't fucking like this. And... um. He said, no, it'd be all right, it'd be all right. And we went in there in the morning. There was like three CID plain clothes all pretending to like be reading the form in the shop. And they said, uh, Jason, Brian, you're, uh, you're under arrest. And um, yeah, straight to uh, straight to prison. Yeah, my first um, time in prison. Yeah, well, yeah. What yeah. were you charged with? Fraud? Uh, fraud, yeah, fraud, yeah. What, and what um, evidence did they have against you? Were they following you or whatever? Um so what, what they've said is they, they circulated our picture all over the country to every fucking single bookmakers, oh, excuse me, in the country. Um, and I think they'd done this for about 20 or 30 shops, which was great. Um, and uh, what I mentioned earlier on, the, 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 the camera in the film, what, what they'd done is they just went back over a, a certain few months and check the film like it, in the till and see that our bets wasn't on the on the film roll. So, you know, so, so we was bang the rights. Yeah, we couldn't go not guilty. Was that ever a concern, then checking the cameras and you throwing slips and you swapping slips? Um, well, no, because they, they couldn't check the fucking... They couldn't check the film there it's, and then, James. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, like, it was a special... A chap who had to come in and it would take like three or four days so I mean we, I mean we didn't get like 10 out of 10 shops I think we'd like got sort of seven out of eight and then two that or three that we didn't get they'd say oh we're, uh, we're going to check the f uh, film on this one so could you come back in two days and obviously we didn't go back mm. in two days time yeah what sentence did you get um so I've done five and a half months on remand um with dead was banged up with dad. <laughs> How was that being in prison <laughs> oh, with your dad? <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! I was on the top. He was on the bottom. Smoking fucking roll ups. Uh, pass me. Uh, pass me a roll up, Jason. Fucking like oh, this is just like mental. Like it, it was insane. Um, we got treated like fucking royalty because we, we, we was in there scamming the bookmakers. And, you know, a lot of people still to this fucking day, James, they, they don't like the bookmakers, you know. And um, it wasn't nice at all, you know. I mean, like, uh, like the first day I was in there, I thought, what the fuck? Um, 
But five and a half months, we went to court, uh, see the judge, and he let me go. Um, he deferred my sentence, and he give Dad, what did he give him? Two and a half years, because he, he, he give him, I think he give him 12 months for the bookies, and I think he give him another 18 months for the fraud, what he was wanted for when, like, we first started, when we went on the run, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So see, after that, when you get out of prison, were you thinking just straight back to work? Or are you thinking, I need to screw the nut and make changes? Even when I was, sorry, but I, when I was in the jail, we mm. used to be in Lethem Hall. But I used to, I used to, I was still betting. Two oh. bars of chocolate, used to pick whatever meeting it was, say five, six <laughs> meetings. You, if you, you won, you get three points, second, two points, third, one point. However, I had the most <coughs> point wins, all the chocolate. Like, I was still trying to get my fix. I was still putting phone calls on yeah. to my sister, yeah. my friends, like batter this on, yeah. football. So I had a coupon <coughs> for the Saturday and the Sunday. I was but a, it's madness. I was a bookie, James. Mm -hmm. I was a bookie in, um, I think, I, the third or fourth sentence that I'd done, and I was just taking bets left, right, and centre, phone cards, tobacco, snout, and all that. And um, you'll never see a poor bookie. And uh, my uh, drawers were full up with chocolate and uh, tobacco and fucking crisps and pot noodles and Christ, and all these phone cards. How old are you, James? 58. Right, so did you have phone cards when you yeah, were in yeah, jail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think I had about 30 or 40 uh, phone cards in my drawer, so, uh, and they was like two quid each. <laughs> So that was like 80 quid's worth of fucking phone cards in my jaw. Um, That's mad, but, isn't it? It's mental. So yeah. see, when you get out then, are you thinking just straight back to work? In them days, yeah. But yeah. then you've got, you become a massive days. target. That like, was always fear in your mind when yeah. you went into bookies or do you lose that just to get that fix? I'll tell you what happened. It was, you know, I keep blaming the old man, but it was, um, he used to come round, come on, we're going out to work. This is, this is what we used to call it, work. You know, it's fucking stupid when I, when I think about it now. Um, what we're doing, yeah, we'll just pop off for a week. Um, and, you know, we used to drive to Scotland. Uh, <laughs> where about are you from Glasgow, in Scotland? Glasgow, possible. Yeah, yeah, I've done all that, yeah. But, um, no, it was just, it was insane. It, it was like our job, James, you know. I mean, I had an eye for fucking back and horses, but the roulette, used to absolutely kill me for all like as i say for 30 fucking years the roulette has absolutely fucking destroyed me um i think the last casino i was in it was about three years back and i took a grand there in cash and i, I didn't take no cards i went there on my own i thought to myself i'll go to someone and if they're winning then i can just like bow off them and i think i want to beat five or six grand on the roulette but i went there three years ago and he said to me you're banned and i said why and he didn't tell me he said we don't have to give you a reason and um he said and also you're banned from every casino in uh united kingdom why? so they they, they, they they didn't tell me so that's that's quite that's um that's quite good for me but then you've you've still got the uh what happens if you're caught in a casino now i can't get in them james i, I can't I, I can't get in them yeah i can't you know, you need you need ID to join out to be a member. Um, if I got someone to sign me in, then they, they, they they're keeping their eye on you. Like you can only win up to like fifteen hundred quid, two grand or something. So, you know, all you can like. So if I wanted to do that, basically, I'm on the odds to fucking lose a lot of dough. If I walked in there like with fifteen, twenty grand, all I can win is two, but I can lose. 15, 15, 20 grand, yeah. Were you scamming the casino as well? No, no, not at all. No, no, not at all. It's hard done there, though, with all No, cameras. not at all. No, no. I think I've done it I think I've done it once, and I got away with it. I was about 25. Um, roulette, I was sitting there. I've just done me fucking bollocks. And um, it stopped, and there was a little bit of commotion going on, a, a little scuffle or something. And the croupier looked to her left, and I think I just put a 100 or 200... Uh, two 100 uh, pound chips on black and it stopped on like number 15 and she she paid me I thought oh that was good but uh, once one, mm. once and that's it I've never done it again yeah. how much do you think you've spent in the bookies your whole life um I've done see we haven't really got onto this yet but the the roulette machines they come out into the bookmakers 15 16 years ago and when they come out, that's when I'll, I have lost over £4 million in them 
disgusting fucking roulette machines. As soon as they come out, I walked in a fucking, I, I was in Spalding in up Lincolnshire. I walked in my local betting shop, Coles, and I see this big fucking machine looking at me. I thought, what the fuck's that? I went over, it's roulette, uh, put your money in, up to £100, which I did. I had it on red, come in red. I thought, fucking hell, that was handy. Click that. Went out the bird, give it a, a thing. She's giving me 200 quid. I thought, but from that day, the day they come out, I've got completely and utterly fucking hooked to them machines. It was, it, my life, I mean, it was a disaster when we used to go into the casinos, but my, it was like a disaster times a million as soon as them fucking machines come out. How do you think your life would be if you never gambled? Wow. See, the thing is, James, for the last five years, I have not got involved on roulette at all. Not, not at all. So thank fuck for that. Like, thank. I, I've just, I think, I just said to myself, you, you've got to grow up. You've got to grow up because you're just going to keep going back to prison, do your money on the fucking roulette, go out, lump on a fucking horse, the horse fucking wins, bump back to the roulette, do your fucking dough. And I've stopped. I've stopped the fucking... You, did you say you used to gamble? Everything, yeah. Have you stopped? Yeah, in five right. years. Right. So, not one bet. So that's Not what one saying, lottery yeah. ticket, not one scratch card. I can't yeah. just put a bet on a horse. I was sitting doing 24, 48 hour shifts, fucking NFL and water polo and yeah. ESPN, whatever shite was on that, so mm. I could just sit and watch and... I'd never left the house, just started smoking weed. Like I, I became a recluse. But yes, I was doing a lot yeah. of bad things to fix that habit. I wasn't fucking it because if I found an in to do so, yeah, I would still do be it. doing it. Would, fucking yeah. right. Like, I, you, I did, would, yeah. you wouldn't care. You don't care who you're hurting because it's a hidden addiction. We pretend. Yeah. Like, so it's, a, it's an act, you know this yourself. But see when you started in and out of prison and stuff like that, yeah. were you ever in debt to like loan sharks or was ever on no, top of you? No, 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 not at all. No, not at all. Because like it was so fucking easy for us to get money from the bookmakers. It was so fucking easy. It was just a little bit of fucking sleight of hand, a little bit of chit chat, and then we'd get paid. And that was it. That My fucking downfall was roulette. It was, I'll tell you, you know, you, you you know, James, you had all the fucking numbers on a roulette table, it comes to 666. You, you, yeah. you knew that, yeah? Yep. It's, so that's that, that's telling you something, isn't it, mm -hmm. you know? But, um, yeah, I've stopped, the same as you, roulette. But I still, which I always have done all my life, I still lump on horses. I still do. I don't think you ever stop. You don't want to stop yeah, anyway, but, do you? Yeah, but I don't, I don't, see now, James, I don't get involved. When I was in the bookmakers with that, if we just got, if we collected three or four, five grand, whatever, I would say, Dad, come on, let's let's go. Because basically I wanted to get to the hotel, drink, and I wanted to get to the casino to play fucking roulette. But no, no, James, come on, let's just have this. Let's have that weren't my game, James. Like fucking like horse racing. Every fucking every race. Every fucking dog. It wasn't my game, but the roulette, thank fuck, I've stopped. Thank fuck. What made you stop? Well, um, so when was I last in jail? Uh, three years ago. And um, I thought, no, I got arrested for this for these two bookies about four or five years ago. And the, the, the me barrister said, look, you could end up going to jail because... Um, Oh, that's right. I wasn't allowed in the bookies at the time. I was still on that fucking ban. So they've done me for that as well. So when I got arrested for that, I, I said to myself, oh, I have got to fucking stop playing roulette. And that was it. That was it. I think that was the wake up call. Yeah. Did you, did you, anybody ever try and take, take you out because you were scamming so much money? Um, funny you should say that. I got burgled last week. Yeah. Yeah. I've never been burgled at all ever in my fucking life. And, um, you know, there's there's videos of me now on fucking TikTok and Instagram. I'm sitting with, on a table like this with fucking 100 grand. I'm, I'm just taking a piss. I had a few trolls on Twitter years ago when, when I was on Twitter. And now what I just do, I just do that just to piss them off. But there was one, um, I put this video on TikTok. I was sitting there with 100 grand and uh, I was just taking a piss. 
and there was a comment, and it was from a woman. Well, it might have been a bloke, but it was a woman's face. And she said, aren't you worried about getting robbed? And I said, no. <laughs> now, I put this video up like six months ago. And um, I got robbed last week. Um, I won't go into detail what they took, right? But um, she's commented on the uh, TikTok video, which I put up six months ago. She said... So you, you're, you're not worried then? <laughs> I thought you bitch. <laughs> I blocked off. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> Just shows you, but then that social media's a powerful tool. That, oh, is your dad God. still gambling? He's still, he's still having a bit, yeah. You know, not obviously not as much because he can't get it now. But um, yeah, he's having, yeah, he's having like 70, 80s on one, seven or four shot, nine or four shots and all that. Um, I think he gets his, um, what's it called? His pension. And he's up the bookmakers. Uh, he can get in. I don't, I don't know how. They let, they let him in, but they, they won't fucking let me in. I mean, he got banned as well, the same time as me for five years, but they let him in. I think they just let him in because he's such a fucking bad gambler. So they just oh, let him in. You know, he's 85. He ain't going to do nothing. And he just keeps doing his brains every every week, every two weeks, whenever he gets his pension. You wrote a book as well, JSO. What was that about? It's, yeah, it was about bookies. my life, yeah. It was about my life, but but the book, I was, so the book finished in 2000, uh, so I started it in 2016. It took me a year. I just fucking sat in doors. Um, I thought, boy, I'm going to just tell everybody about me fucking life. Got it uh, published. Um, I rang up a random Penguin House and they said, uh, right, give us six weeks. We're, we're going to read this and all that and then we'll get back to you. And then two days later, I had a phone call from another publisher. He said, I w Jason, I want that book. He said, I want that. I said, who are you? And he said, well, check me out. Check me out on, on the internet and all that. I checked him out. He'd been, he'd been a publisher for like 30 years, all true crime books. I thought, fuck it. I'll, I'll go with him. And I went with him. And then it was out about a month, six weeks. I had loads of, I think I had about 90, 90 100 fucking five-star reviews on Amazon. And then um, he cancelled the book. Uh, and he he said he he, he he had a phone call from the CID that they're going to arrest him if, if he don't cancel the book. And, and I said to him, "You are." I said, "Like the fucking craze of books and, and, and films and all that. Their publishers don't get uh, they're not going to get arrested." I said, "All I've done is just a few bookies for like twenty five years. Are you telling me the truth, Brian?" Yes, he said. Yes, I've got to cancel the book, and um, he cancelled the book. So. Uh, I mean, I could get it out there again, James. I've had uh, a, a, another publisher, which I, I won't mention his name at the moment, but he said, I'm going to get this out for you. This was about three months ago, but it's like on hold. Um, I suppose I could, like, you know, self-publish, but I just, now with like what I'm doing now, being a tipster, I haven't got time. I ain't got time to do that, so... Unless you know any publishers, do you? Yeah, no publishers. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, get out there. People love those sort of stories. Like, James, me, James, me, get, get out there. Fuck the like, People got their choices. Listen, scamming people and that. But the big, listen, it's the big bookies, like, fuck them. The people, the amount of spins you can do in a roulette machine in five minutes, yes, you could lose yeah. thousands upon thousands. Like, for me, like, I don't give two fucks about the bookies, man. Like, for people scamming lots the bookies. Lots of people don't. No, yeah, lots of people don't. Because I was a gambler myself, I know the destruction it caused, but I've still got to take responsibility exactly. of my own choices. But they don't care, man. That they, they The happily... bookies don't care, no, no. But the thing is with me, James, I used to detest the staff. See, I used to absolutely fucking detest them. Oh, Why? Because when these roulette machines come out, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you one example. I was sitting on a on a chair in Coles or Lab Books, and I was doing about fifteen hundred quid in twenty minutes, sweating. And um, I, I'm on, sitting on this beautiful black, comfortable. They, 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 I swear they they just get these chairs in to make you feel nice and comfortable and everything. And I was doing about 1,500 quid, and um, one of the staff come up to me, blonde, fucking tasty, busty, and that. And um, she said, oh, I'm just popping to the shop. Do you want a sandwich? Now, I'm doing me fucking brains in the fucking roulette. I've stopped, James. I've looked. I said, I've, 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 I've looked. I said, you, you, what? She said, I'm just popping to the shop. Do you want a sandwich? And because she was a fucking soul, I, I, like, usually I'd say, oh, fuck off. I'm, you know, I'm doing my brains here. Just leave me alone. But because she was a soul, um, 
I said, yeah, get me a sandwich. Yeah, ham and cheese, please. So 20 minutes later, she's come back. I think I've, I've put another two and a half, three grand in the machine. And um, she said, here, yeah, babes. And I've just, like, I've just looked at her and thought, what the fuck? I thought, this, this, this sandwich has just cost me five grand. And I used to detest them. I thought, you bastards. You know, you, you made me fucking sit there for another half hour waiting for you to get the sandwich, and I've done another three grand. But do you know what, James? Now, when I think about it, they, they, they've been told by all the bookmakers to do this is their fucking job now. This is their job to get you comfortable in the bookmakers to do your fucking money. It's not them. They don't do that. But but now, there's all fucking cameras in the bookmakers. Oh, another thing, I've, which I've got, I should have said this at the beginning. Don't fucking copy my scams because you will get fucking caught. It's all CCTV in the shops now, James. You know what I mean? You've got absolutely no chance and you will go to jail. But getting back to the staff, it, it wasn't them. They was told to do it from, from the big boys on top. Labrooks, Coles, William Mills and that, yeah. What's Jerry Tenky Alcoholic Taxi? <laughs> That's just a, that was another shop. Um, we went in there, basically, we'd done it for 10 grand or... I think we went over, yeah, over the odds, 13, 14 grand. He said, my 10 grand is my only limit. He said, come back tomorrow <coughs> and I'll have the 10 grand for you. So we've gone back the next day, <clears throat> um, 11 o'clock in the morning. He weren't there. Uh, where's Jerry? Where's Jerry? Uh, I'll just ring him. I can't get hold of him. And this went on for three days. We kept going back the next day. And then um, what we'd done on the fourth day, we got, uh, we, we got a taxi just a, a random fucking taxi near the bookmakers. And he said, where are you going, Gov? And we said, oh, Jerry's hoping that, um, oh, we, we knew he liked to drink, this Jerry. He was, it, it, when we see him on the first day, he was always like, he stunk of fucking alcohol. People in the shops said he was always in the boozer. So we got the taxi and we said, oh, we're going to, uh, Jerry's please. He said, oh, do you owe him? And we said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thinking, oh, this is good. So he's going to take us to his house, which he, he did. And we've knocked the door, and we're not fucking violent, James. We're not like fucking gangsters or anything. Anyway, we've knocked the door. He's opened the door. He's gone fucking white because he's seen me and dead. And um, he said, I'll have your fucking money tomorrow. I'll have your fucking money. We said, well, you, You've been saying this for three days. And then we, we went to the shop the next day, and we thought, Hang on, this could be on top now. We sent a, we sent a young kid in there with the betting slip. He's come out fucking four minutes later. He's approached me and dad. He's walked slowly to me and dad with a fucking, uh, an envelope, big fucking, big envelope in his hand. And he's given it to me and dad. There was a 10 grand in there. And um, we've given him two, 300 quid. He said, go on, mate, fuck off. And he's run. And that was it. Um, but Jerry, yeah, good old Jerry, the, uh, the alcoholic, yeah. Do you have yeah. any regrets with it? Um, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do, James. Yeah, because like, what I have heard in, like, in the like, newspaper and, and internet fucking clippings of me, I don't think no one got the sack. I've never heard of any fucking staff getting the sack. I've actually, when I was on Twitter years ago, I, I, I used to get people DM me, you bastard, you got me the sack. But I've I never fucking heard of it like uh, in the newspaper or on the internet, anybody getting the sack because of me and dad. But they used to get like, rucked by the big boys. And I think it was a lot, like a little bit, in, excuse me, sorry, <clears throat> in ba like embarrassing for them that they've been conned by me and dad. And I mean, I, like towards the end, it, it was like crazy because our pictures were in every fucking shop in the bookmakers. And um, we should just go in there and they just obviously they didn't recognize us. And, uh, used to pay us out and that was it. It was fucking, it was crazy. Absolutely crazy. Oh, that's crazy, isn't it? And this went on for 25 stretch. Mm. Yeah. Do, Stopped. Do you think if you wanted to, you could scam the bookies now? Of course, yeah. Yeah, I could just pop into one now. Um, but, oh, they've got a new system out now. Anything over 400 quid, they've got to ring another shop and send them that betting slip Um to the other shop and then the other shop will, will just say, look, that, that bet don't look right, don't pay it out. So, yeah, um, 
yeah, I could go into a shop and do them for 300 quid, but I, I, no, no, that ain't, that ain't worth me fucking while, James. Yeah, well, that, does your sentences get bigger or is it just another more slaps um, in the wrist? So the last sentence, uh, a judge gave me 20 weeks and this was during COVID. Uh, I had to do uh, 10 weeks, which was, I think, quite pathetic, really. I mean, um, when I went to court, the barrister said, you know what? You could go to jail, but I don't think you'll be going to jail because it's COVID. Everybody's in there, all masked up and all that. But he, yeah, he gave me twenty weeks. But um, there won't be no more, James. There will not be no more because now I've stopped the fucking roulette. Now I just has a lump on the fucking horse, and no more, no more jail time. No. Did no. you get help? Did you ask for help? No. Or, well, yes. Yeah. A few times years ago, but. Um, that was like, like if we was on bail, then the thing to do was go, you know, do a bit of moody, go to the Gamblers Anonymous and all that. And then, you know, when you go to court, it's like, oh, well, he's been to Gamblers Anonymous, Your Honor. You know, he's really trying, which is all bollocks. Because when I was in the Gamblers Anonymous uh, room with like 15, 20 people, 80% of them was on bail ready to go to court for fucking fraud or thieving or whatever. So it was just, you know, and, and, and they had their excuse, like um, they've got a major fucking gambling uh, addiction and all that. Um, they probably did, but I think I had like like one of the biggest fucking gamblers, uh, gambling addictions mm -hmm. at the lot of them. But yeah, I used to just sit there in the room and I didn't take no notice. Um, you know, I, I, have you been? Have you been before? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> did it work for you or? I never finished the 12 steps. I still <laughs> speak to Alex um, because I knew some of the gamblers on that went as well and they were still gambling. Look, look, everybody's yeah. still got, but again, they're trying, they're trying. So I understood yeah. that I went and I realised I can make changes myself. I yes. didn't like, yeah. um, I felt, I used to always look at gamblers <laughs> and think I'm better than them. I used to always look, yes. look at people taking drugs. I'm better than them. Yeah. I was in the same fucking boat. Yeah. Went to lots of meetings in and out for years. So you had the top three. You had the alcohol, I had the, drugs, No, and the not alcohol. The the gambling was the main one. The, right. the, the booze and the drugs was a weekend. It wasn't yes. an everyday right. thing, right. Okay. but it was right. fucking when I smashed it. Yeah. I smashed it for yeah. a long period of time. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It all, I felt as if all the negative shit came hand in hand. Because when you're a gambling, you feel like a fucking loser. Yes. Let's be honest, yes. you feel like an all-time loser. And I was making good money. I was doing bad shit, but I just, it was just funding a habit like you. You were just making money to fund that habit yeah. and get that kick of yeah, dopamine just yeah. to feel alive. And once you've not got a bet on, your life felt like shit. Yeah, but it, the, uh, uh, I keep saying, I keep going back back to it, but the, the roulette... Did, was you into roulette? Everything. Roulette is Everything. evil. It but is only the thing most... with roulette, in my mind, it was too short. I would put the rugby ah, league on or rugby or the see. snooker yeah, yeah, so yeah, I could yeah, watch yeah. it for yeah. two or three hours and prolong my bet. Yes, yeah, I'll see. Do you know what I mean? Like I knew it was too <clears> short. Yeah. And I would and then mm. if I was skint the whole day, I would be agitated. Yeah. It's like fucking coming yeah. off. See, with me, if I was skint, I would say, Dad, come on, let's go and let's go and yeah. do a bookies. Or, or, or I'd ring him and say, Dad, come on. And if he said, Look, I'm busy, then I'd go out on my own. Um I would never try and save. <clears throat> Just, it just went to the casinos. It just went on back on the fucking roulette table. That's all. That's, uh, all my money went into the casinos or onto them fucking evil roulette machines. Every fucking penny. But one time, as an example, about 15 years ago, I was in Leeds and I was on my own and I'd done six William Mills in the space of two hours, 600 quid each. A condom, 600 quid each. So that's 36, 6, 12. 1824, 3600. Yeah, so I stopped, got myself an hotel, a uh, couple of drinks, nine o'clock that night, 10 o'clock that night, straight to the casino, done the lot. Woke up in the morning with 30 quid, went straight back into the fucking William Mills where I'd done the, uh, the day before, tried to do them again. And um, he said, mate, you've done me for 600 yesterday. He said, it's bang on top. He said, you've done all round fucking leads. And um, <clears throat> I think I, I got nicked for that a year later. And then the the, the usual five months on remand, and then you're free to go. So, yeah. Did the, any of the staff ever give you a heads up? No, no, not at all. No, the staff were not in it. No, 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 no. No, but if they, it was on top for you? No, you no, 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 not at all. No, not at all. No, no, like uh, a, a few of them would, like, um, if it was on top, 
you, 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 you could just tell like with their faces and they just try to keep you in the shop, you know, oh, do you want a cup of tea? Do you want a cup of coffee? And we, no, no, thanks, love. Like, oh, I'm off, I'll see you tomorrow and all that. But um, no, no, they never give us the heads up. No, no, never. So what are you doing with your <clears> life now? You're giving people tips. So I... Is so this legit or is it another this form of is you? This one just fucking on? million percent legit. So I stopped the roulette five years ago and concentrated on my fucking horses, which... I've had an eye for fucking horses since the day fucking dot, James. And um, I was on, t I, I opened a TikTok account and um, I was putting my bets on. Um, I was only, I look back there and uh, I think I'll give like 15 winners out of 15 in, in, in the space of 15 days. And then all these people like DMing me saying, why don't you do, uh, why don't you fucking, start charging <coughs> i thought no no I, 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 I can't i can't do that but i can't see online can we stop yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um so where was we so i'll give 15 winners on the trot on tiktok a few people were saying i've got a load of dms on tiktok saying look jace why don't you start fucking charging for this you can't get on in a shop no more. You can't fucking go and place a bet. There's only one fucking bookmaker who, who will take a fucking bet off me. Um, you know, I can't keep traveling all the way out to fucking, like, Scotland to place a bet on, for example. So, yeah, I've started, um, I've started, I'm a tipster now. Um, it's been going nearly a fucking year. And, um... 80% of my members who, 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 who joined a year ago are still with me. I've got over fucking 2,000 members. It's going, it's going strong, James. It's going very, very, very well. And I don't use like a, like a point system like all the other fucking, all the other tips. I've also got to apologize as well because when I like come on TikTok as a tipster, I've noticed now there's like 30, 40, 50 fucking want to be fucking tipsters on TikTok. They backs a fucking horse or they backs a dog and then all of a sudden they're a fucking tipster. And it's, 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 it's quite embarrassing to watch them actually. But I'm not like all the other fucking divvy uh, tipsters out there. And, and when I say all the others, I mean, they're so fucking moody, it's unbelievable. There, there's, and I ain't going to mention no names, but there's one who says he, he, he gets fucking um, uh, contact information from a certain trainer. So everybody fucking asks this certain trainer on Twitter if he do give information to this certain tipster. And he's, this, this trainer said, I've never heard of him. So that was that bollocks. There's another one on, um, on Twitter. I ain't going to mention his name, but it, apparently he, he fucking um, alters his fucking slips, his online slips. And he's got caught two or three times for it in the last year. Um you just got to be careful. There's one across, across the water. As I say, I ain't going to mention no names. But um, apparently what he's doing um, is, is backing every fucking horse in the race. Just say there's nine runners, uh, nine horses in the race. He's having a score on every fucking uh, horse. And if a 33 to 1 horse wins that race, it's like, look at this. This is info. This is fucking info. And it... it, it display that is is 20 pound winning slip on the 33 to one fucking all so with me i mean like all my members they they they, they sends me all the fucking winning slips and um there'd be like 30 40 50 fucking slips what i will show to people on uh instagram tiktok and everything so yeah it's going away right. yeah it's really good going forward for the future jace like what's your plans then Staying What's out of trouble, plans? no scamming. There'll be no more scamming. One, one fucking million percent. No. Um, I'm going to, listen, James, I didn't think this fucking uh, tipping would, 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 would take off. I really didn't. As I started, I started it a year ago, um, I said, contact me if you want to get involved. I had eight people pay on one day. And I said, to, I said to me, dad, I said, fuck me, dad. I said, look, I've got eight people uh, joined at 30 quid a month. That's 240 quid. And then the next day, there was like 300 people join. 
and I thought myself, wow, this is like, you know, insane. Um, I think like three, four weeks after I was a tipster, um, I'll give, there's a, there's a chap I know, I know him as Big Mark from Newmarket. I've known him for fucking years. He's a professional gambler. And um, he said to me after three weeks, he said, look, Jace, look, there's three fucking horses today. He said, if you want to get more members, he said, these three horses are going to fucking win. Now, he's very intelligent, this 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 Mark. Very, very nice geezer. He's a millionaire. He's never done a day's graft in his life. Never pulled a stroke in his fucking life. And uh, I said, are you sure? He said, yes. Just put these three horses up on Instagram and TikTok before they fucking run. So I said, well, I can't put the fucking horses on TikTok on social media before they run because I'm a tipster, Mark. He said, well, just say then you've got three horses a day and they're not going to fucking lose. And and and, and the, the treble's paying like 60 to one. I said, all right. So I said, I've got three horses a day. I said, they're, they've got, they're all going to fucking win and the treble's paying 60 to one. And they all won at 60 to one. What about for anybody watching, Jace, that's maybe struggling with gambling? What advice would you have for well, them? People, good good question. Very, very, very good question. People struggling with gambling. Do not play. Do not get involved with roulette. Do not ever get involved with roulette, fucking casino games on, online. If you're going to go online or have a bet on, on an horse, do not play the fucking casinos. Do not. Delete it or, or there's a... Um, you can... Uh, chat in the help thing and just just ban yourself from the casino and do not chase do not chase if you've if you've done a few quid that day that's it just leave it just leave it do not chase if you chase you will do your fucking dough left right and center jace for coming on and doing your story mate what like, very let's some fraud there's millions more but we, we we've run out of time but there's it's, so fucking much more it's unbelievable would you like to finish up on anything yeah, just uh, roulette. Do not fucking get involved with that roulette. Yeah, do Jeez. not. Listen, mate, I wish you all the best for the future. Oh, Stay out of trouble, yes, mate. Yeah. Stay out of prison, at least. <laughs> See you soon, mate. Okay, you Cheers. take care.